Uh, welcome to Black History Month 365. Uh, Greenwich is uh, now going into the form of Black History Month should be every day, not uh, in October only. So today we'll be showcasing all our awardees that regarding arts, culture and heritage. So the session will be broken up and then I'll give a brief introduction. Then I welcome the awardees to come in and say a few words about what they will be delivering. Then we'll pick up a few questions from there. Then we'll open up for, mem uh, for everybody else that's in the, on the chat to ask questions. So number one, I would like to say happy Nigerian Independence Day. I can't forget that one again. So happy to all my Nigerian community. Happy Independence Day for today. As you are aware that we, as a council, have put out a bid for Black History Month for organizations to bid and deliver some work. We have received 26 bids and excess of over 200K with the work they wanted to do. So it was amazing bids that came in. Unfortunately, we only had 35K to use up and we selected nine organizations that were successful to deliver the work around Black History Month for all our community, all our residents of the Royal Bar of Greenwich. Some of the stuff they'll be delivering will be dance, poetry, music, heritage, and showcasing so many other stuff. That's amazing, that's always delivered around in the borough. I would like to add as well that it's been challenging for all of us due to COVID, and especially to all our oldies, as at the beginning it was, for us to have a part live and part online activities. And that was the idea, then things have changed and they are changing day by day. So they worked extremely hard to shift across to make everything online. <clears throat> and uh, which we are very grateful for them to making things like that so quickly in just a short period of time. And we would like everybody on this call to support our local organizations by tweeting about them, tweeting about the events that they're going to be putting online, all their workshops. And it would be great if you can share that with your mail list and encourage all your you know, followers as well to subscribe, watch on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. All the information is on Greenwich Council website. So if you log in, it's all there for Black History Moms and all the activities that are happening across the borough, Virgil activities that's happening and the celebration. So maybe I'm a little bit early, but a bit early than late. So I will start off by giving each awardee two minutes to tell us about the activities that they're looking to deliver, what it contains, uh, how people can join and uh, how they are going to be delivering the most amazing thing for our borough. So if we start with the first one is Souls for Gathering. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Seth. Uh, I am in charge of um, All Souls Gathering as the president and um, we are very happy to be part of this um, celebration. Um, also, Gathering is a faith group um, based in Woolwich um, within the uh, Greenwich Borough as well. And um, when we saw this opportunity, we found it as a great um, fit for us to join in, which is um, a predominantly um, a black group, um, people from the African origin and the Caribbean as well. So we chose after the um, grant was um, awarded to us after we bid it, um, we chose the team Black Kaleidoscope. And the reason why we chose this team was uh, is as a result of we bringing out um, the creativity of the African continent, our culture and our heritage and also um, our untold stories. So these are the things, activity that we have put together um, for this um, monthly program, even though um, we are all aware that Black history is something that must not be a, just a euphoria, but um, a continuous or a generational act. Um, the first thing will be first event to be held at um, the Village Center, which is which will be on the on the second. That is on the second of this month 
um, it will be spoken word night and also on the 16th as well um, of this month will be drama performance also at the um, at the village center and also we have um, our African dance our African drumming African fabric making African jewelry making African mask making and capoeira all these activities will be held on zoom and um, every information that will be needed, um, we are very ready to um, send the information to us as well. And during the program online, we'll be exhibiting um, uh, various types of African drums. For example, among the Ghanaians, we have one drum, it's a talking drum known as um, a tumpan. Why that drum? The, benefit, the importance of that drum and what relates um, to our tradition um, and the significance of its relation to our traditions and culture. We'll also be uh, exhibiting, um, showcasing um, our African um, jewelry making as well. And one thing about Africans and our way we make jewels, um, they have um, um, what I call meaning. So we will also be explaining all that. So these are some of the, um, because of time, I will end here. These are some of the um, activities that we'll be bringing on board. So um, we are very happy to also invite everyone to join us as well. Thank you very much. Oh, that's it, that's it. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Turn on my video again. Okay? Hello, can everyone hear me okay? I'm still there, hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can hear Del, you. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for all souls gathering. <laughs> that was amazing. Looking forward to it. And we, like I said, we will be sharing that information on our website, on all our social media, so people right. can always follow from there. And just to add as well, that lot, most of these organizations, as we have given them funding for it, they will be Adele, we've lost Adele, uh, with small amount of funding, which we really appreciate that. Uh, I would like to welcome Black Female and Debra to come on next to tell us what they will be delivering. Because Adele's um, band was great. Fantastic. Lucy, you're there. Hello. <laughs> Hello, you're welcome to. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Adele. Can hear me? Can hear you? Yeah, yeah, Lucy's, Lucy's got the screen now, Adele, Adele, and with her drums. So, Adele. Brilliant. So I'm going to, sorry, I'm getting attacked by pigeons. Can you hear me okay? I'm on the roof of, hello. Hello. Can you hear, Can you hear me? Can, you hear us clearly? Can we go on? Uh, yes, go on, Lucy, go on. Okay, you're welcome to the Black Female Entrepreneur Workplace Studio. So we are grateful, we are honored to be awarded this uh, contract to actually um, showcase the best of African heritage and culture and the black female entrepreneur have actually officially launched the black history month 365 this morning at 6 a.m so we uh, we are rolling on and we started with the knitting and weaving and afro beat dance session at term shade uh, there's a lot of activities that will be going on we collaborated with um, the um with uh, the ivorian community with the Congolese community and the Republic of Benin and Nigerian community. We'll be having storytelling at Batway Theater. The spaces are very limited uh, because of social distance. So it will not be the participant, uh, but we'll be streaming live on our social media platform. There's going to be a Jollof Rice competition. Last year, the Gambia won, but the battle is on because Nigerian communities say the Jollof Rice belongs to them. So that will be taking place at the Woolwich Common Community Center. We're expecting some of, one of you to be our judge, but don't be partial because uh, 
you will not love what the community will do to you. So it's going to be between Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, and Senegal. So let the best cook win. And we're also going to have the best of African dish. Will be some dishes from North Africa, East Africa, West Africa. We're going to be having like five judge. The food will be done by Lalu Ketri and to be delivered to your doorstep. So, and you will join us live on Zoom via Facebook. So the judge will test the food. We will not tell you where the food is coming from, but you have opportunity to give us which uh, part of, of the African community that cook the best food. So you can, uh, you can actually tell us. We're also going to have um, a drumming session from the Ivorian community. We're going to have history of the um, African slavery and also African artifacts by the president of Benin Republic, um, UK. So he will be live on the social media platform to give us some history of the artifacts and the history of African slavery. Today, seven o'clock, we'll be having the Nigeria Independent live on our social media platform, where we'll be talking about the, um, some of the Nigeria live artists will be performing, drummers, and we'll be talking about the contribution of Nigeria in the UK in terms of health, in terms of other area and politics. We're also gonna have the young people performance, which we are collaborating with Second Thought. They will be doing guitar and piano. So they are already practicing a piece of work, already doing it at Tram Shade. So they will be, um, at the, on the 30th of October, they will be producing a piece of musical tune. So we'll be giving some, some four tickets out to people to participate. Uh, we will also be doing um, uh, uh, the best of Congolese dish where you'll be seeing some cooking show doing from the Congolese community. Also, we'll be having um, the Moonlight Tale. I'll pass over to my, to my colleague because I can talk forever. So. <laughs> <laughs> also, we'll be having the BFG um, poetry in, in, on the Moon Lit Night. That's going to be done weekends. Um, and also, we're going to have the, um, the fashion show. The fashion show is going to come on. Um, as Lucy said, the children, as actually the youngsters, is going to come on as well. So that will be on the 30th. And we are actually bringing Africa to your doorstep. So we'll see you then. And uh, just to round it up, on this studio, you'll be having exclusive buy. Christmas is around the corner. We have local artists will be in our studio. You have to book an hour session. We'll give you a VIP king treatment. So you can actually come into our studio, look at what our artists have done one hour session because of social distance you can book that uh, 30 minutes or one hour session exclusive design for you for you to pick and just shop like a princess so please stay tuned there's a lot on our go to our social media platform you will never have a dull moment because we are here to take you on a journey to africa, africa. well done thank you so much can you hear me okay everyone i think you can i've moved um, around Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Lucy, for that. That was amazing. You know, uh, you know who I would vote for when it comes to a jello fry competition. I won't even mention it on social media, but you know, I know where it originated. We had that debate last time. So thank you so much for that. And I'll move on to Blackheath Halls next. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Hey, good. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon everyone. So my name is Lizzie Green um, and I work in the learning and participation team at Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance um, and we're pleased to be working in partnership with Blackheath Halls on this particular project. I'm actually coming live from St Alfred's Church behind me and um, the venue where our Black History Month concerts will be held in a few weeks time. So as part of our delivery, we'll be running two concerts and pre-concert talks curated and performed by Trinity Laban students with the help of some dedicated mentors that showcase music by black composers and increase awareness of black music and culture. So the mentoring sessions begin today and the programmes of music are starting to take shape. Currently on the bill, we have a violinist and composer who will be presenting her own arrangements of traditional Nigerian folk songs for strings and percussion. And we also have a clarinetist and flautist working together on a programme of chamber music featuring Af African composers such as Gabriel Adedeji and Abdullah Ibrahim. As part of the event, students will also present a talk about the music they're performing to give some of the history and context behind the pieces. The lunchtime concerts will be free to attend and will take place at one o'clock at 
out, distanced audience, fingers crossed, on Thursday the 22nd and Thursday the 29th of October. The concerts will also be recorded and made available to a wider audience on the Trinity Lab and YouTube channel. And we hope these concerts will be the start of a year-long initiative and celebration at Trinity Laban and Blackheath Halls, Black Culture 365, which will include performances and events at our venues throughout the year. So I hope that gives a very brief overview of what we've got planned. Um, and obviously everyone would be very welcome to join us at either event or online. <laughs> Thank you very much. Adele, are you online? Uh, no, sorry, I was muted. Now someone unmuted me. Thank you so much for that. That was brilliant, amazing. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to go and see it myself firsthand. So next will be culture, uh, culture access. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Great. Uh, I am um, a co-founder and director of uh, Culture Access, which deals, which works with um, access to culture for disabled people and other underprivileged, so-called underprivileged people. Um, I feel overwhelmed with all these cultural events that, that has said to be happening and I'm looking forward to all of them. But I feel that our discussion, our events, uh, are more following uh, what the theme was this morning. So um, we're very proud to say that our Black History Month is going to be, uh, our event is very intersectional. And so we will be, it will be on disability and um, being black. So one of the things is when we talk about access to culture is we, we, we say that we cannot ignore the social and structural injustices um, and discrimination that have existed for centuries and are derived from the same intersecting systems of oppression. So we have two events one of which is a webinar in which we discuss um, about this and we have five very very um, interesting and passionate people talking about this and some of them most of them are from Greenwich and I think one of them is among it's in the participants here on the list with Cameron and the uh, and and this will this includes uh, somebody I'm very proud that I managed to persuade to come a young student who will be talking about being young and black and disabled in Greenwich. Um, that is the webinar which will be held on the fifth of October. And the other one is a, a quieter event, big quieter because of the rule of six. And we uh, want to thank um, Woolwich Center Library for hosting us because this will be an event which is more private and there will be interviews with black disabled people um, about their lives their day-to-day -day lives as black disabled people um, so we have to make this only uh, quieter because we can't have more than six people at a place so and it was it was not zoom because we want to give as much um privacy as much control over what is going to be um, their voice. So um, the interviews will be edited and will be broadcast later. So we hope that um, this will give you a rare um, experience because I think that being 
black and disabled. Um, and th these are not the voices that are very common. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, can I welcome Global Future in Music and Arts, please? Oops. <laughs> Hi, I'm Louise. Hello. Hello. I'm Louise. I'm the project manager for Global Fusion Music and Arts. And I'm not going to actually talk about our events. I'm going to show you if I'm allowed to share our screen. But first, I want to say thank you so much for the Greenwich Council giving us funding for Black History Month this year. We've been going 20 years and we celebrate Black History Month every year. And we also try to do as many different cultural events throughout the year, including festivals and um, music events and poetry and uh, film with food and things like this, which are very nice. So I'm just going to try and share my screen. Oh, yes, I can. Excellent. OK, so this should give you more information than I'd be able to give you um, just by talking. So if you want to get up and dance, please do so. and activities happening throughout um, October, starting tonight at eight o'clock with an amazing music night on Zoom um, with the incredible guitarist Alfred Kerry Bannerman, uh, leading African guitarist who was Ossie Busa's guitarist. In fact, he still is, I think. So anyway, I hope that's any questions. You can just uh, send me an email. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was amazing. If my camera worked, you will see me that I was on my feet, dancing, enjoying every single minute of it. And I'm, I'm a guy who loves music. So should we move on to next, which will be Health Watch Greenwich? Hello, I'm Joy Beast. Okay? Watch Greenwich. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, and we're working in partnership with Crafter for this project. So Viv, I know you're on the call, so do chip in at the end if I leave anything out. Um, a bit like Culture Access, we're taking a slightly more discursive approach uh, to Black History Month. And thank you very much to the council uh, for funding us. Uh, so we're focusing on the health and well-being of black women in Greenwich. Um, and we want to encourage black women and we want to support black women in Greenwich to look after their health and well-being. So we've got lots of things planned, um, including an exhibition that's going to pop up all over the borough across um, October. And the exhibition is going to celebrate our black female health workers. Um, and we're going to promote uh, local black artists as part of that. Um, but as part of that exhibition as well, we're going to explore the impact of racism for those black female health workers through their lived experience. Uh, and to relax and connect, and feel good uh, and look after yourself. We've got some free digital heritage arts and craft workshops uh, so people can come along, learn a new skill, restart an old one in a fun group of like-minded women. 
uh, for those for those of you that are more uh, debate and discuss type of woman than a craft and create type of woman, uh, we've got an online question time event uh, run by Black Women for Black Women, and we'll have a panel of exciting speakers focusing on how we as black women uh, can look after ourselves better and what we need from local agencies like the council and the local health service to support us. Uh, so essentially look out for our pop-up exhibition, our arts and craft workshops uh, and our question time symposium. Uh, so all the dates and details, um, if they're not already, will be on the uh, council website and on the Health Watch Greenwich website. Anything from you Viv? Yeah, hi, just to say hello to everybody. I'm so sorry I'm offline, but I'm on the move. Um, just to say thank you, Joy. It should be a really exciting time. We'll be in and around the borough in all four corners of the borough and hopefully right in the middle of the borough um, displaying some art by some incredible um, artists, local artists, black artists, showing um, examples of women and their experiences. We even have a nude, but that's only if we're allowed to put it out. Bye. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for unmuting me. That was a little bit late. I, that was great, brilliant black women. You know, I've, I've got so many women in my life. My mum raised me on her own. Um, I've got a little daughter, um, which I'm very proud of. And that is That's looking crazy. forward to this. Brilliant, thank you so much for that. So, uh, next will be Maritime Museum. Hello. Hello, can you hear us? Loud and clear. Hi. We just need yes. the screen sharing, please. Can we screen share, Sam? Yep, <laughs> Sam. Screen. Um, great, it's always a joy when it works. Um, <laughs> So just to introduce ourselves, I'm uh, Sarah Lockwood, um, <coughs> Head of Learning Interpretation for Royal Museums Greenwich. And I'm Katie Castles, the Family Programmes Producer for the National Maritime Museum. And we just wanted to say a massive thank you for um, inviting us to take part in today and indeed supporting the activities that we've got planned uh, for October. We have a range of programmes which we've um, grouped under the heading of Global Greenwich Reframing Black Histories. And we want to use uh, this opportunity to showcase some of the year round work that we have been doing, also use it to initiate new work, which we can continue to run and to extend our work with partners and to collaborate with um, a range of different communities. So we've grouped our programme under three headings. Um, every month is Black History Month, so reinforcing um, Black History Month 365. Uh, reframing black histories, retelling whitewash histories and celebrating black futures. So we've just got some highlights um, of the programme, not the, not the entire programme because we're aware we've only got two minutes and then we have a short film to show you which is something that we've been working on as part of the, of the programme funding. So as part of retelling whitewashed histories we've got a number of talks going on through the month. Um, so we've got a online conversation with Stella Dadsey on women, slavery and resistance. We've also got an online film screen, screening and discussion of Surf Girls of Jamaica with Tony Walker. And then another online webinar called Mutiny at Sea, Enslaved African Resistance on Board. Okay, then in Celebrating Black Futures, um, we've created a number of opportunities. Over the summer, we have been working with a collective of artists called the Blackbird Collective, which I'm sure some of you will have seen their work around Lewisham um, and indeed Woolwich. Um, and they have been uh, working with a range of different communities to create a response as we come out of COVID, thinking about Black Lives Matter um, and also thinking about um, the sense of belonging and with the community coming back together. And we are going to be uh, inviting them to work with two schools in the borough, so Mulgrave and Invicta Primary School, so thank you very much uh, for them for taking part. Um, and they are going to replicate the uh, banners that are going to be presented at the front of the Maritime Museum um, from the 5th of October. They're going to be working with the schools to create their own responses to those big issues um, and make banners for their own schools. Uh, they're also going to be uh, doing some events and activities with our youth collective, so uh, watch this space for some um, outcomes from some of those projects. Oh, no, we don't want to do that just yet. <laughs> 
<laughs> and finally, for uh, reframing black history, we've got a number of school and family workshops, both online and on site. So these include school workshops such as Polar Explorers, Discovering My World, um, and for families, we'll be running creative workshops through half term at the Cutty Sark and every Sunday at the National Maritime Museum. And then finally, we just wanted to um, show you one of the outcomes of a project we're working on as part of this too. There's no time for loading my school. I mean, how could you be on board? The Victory alone has 821 crew members from all around the world from Britain to America, Brazil to Norway, and from all across the West Indies. <laughs> Can you imagine all them different languages and cultures? Mm. Now, there's no chance for loneliness and no time for boredom. So that's just a short clip from um, one of our character actors who normally performs on site across the year, um, but in light of COVID won't be able to be on site for a while. So we've turned the John Simmons character actor into a series of short films that will be available across the year on our website. So that was just the overview of the programme. Um, there are much, many more details on our website. Um, and we hope to either see you here soon in person or see you virtually in the digital world. Thank you all very much. Uh, thank you so much. That was amazing. Definitely looking forward to it. And great that you got more grade and in Victor to great primary school that I know very well. And thank you for all that. Uh, I would call up next, it's the amazing Willage Common Community Centre. Can someone unmute Willage Common Community Centre? Yes. Hello. Hi everybody. Okay. Hi. So what we um, put our bid in for, we've decided to start a BAME library. So we already have a free lending library here, but when we looked through it, there were around two black authors and we know one of them. So we thought we'd start um, a new one. And we've already been donated 68 books from, uh, by Bernadine uh, Ivaristo. So she's also advising us on the, con on the continuance of the library. And we've just have, um, established a relationship with Penguin Books. Also, um, Peter had an idea, why don't we ask the community to donate books? So obviously, Peter was the first one who donated. So, yes, we're also going to run some storytelling. We were going to do it in, in the centre, but now we're doing it online. So the, the first two books, is going to be like a Jack and Ori style online for children. We're not going to target adults for that. It's just going to be for children. So that's what we're doing here, as well as hosting other events uh, with the Black Female Entrepreneurs. Brilliant, that is amazing. And um, anybody that wants to uh, donate books written by black authors, please contact Woolwich Common Community Center, get the word out there. We need more books, even you know, hopefully we will see that in all our libraries across the borough. And I've been speaking to that all some uh, elected members about how we can expand on that going forward for the future, which is very important. Thank you so much, Woolwich Common Community Center, for that. Uh, last but not least is World Heartbeat Music Academy. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, we yeah, can. Hi there, Hello. hi everyone. Um, thanks very much for having us. It's really lovely to be here. We are a music academy called World Heartbeat Music Academy. We're based in Wandsworth. Um, we sort of pride ourselves on being a completely all-inclusive academy. 50% um, of our students are on some kind of bursary support and we really want music to be accessible to everyone. Um, and we have lots of fantastic music teachers, um, one of them being Byron Wallen, who's an amazing trumpeter, um, composer and educator, um, who is going to be leading our project. Um, so what we're hoping to do is some composition workshops with two local schools, Invicta schools. So there's one in Deptford and one in Blackheath. 
Um, and we are going to the year five classes and we will be providing images of masks and sculptures from various different African countries, um, allowing the students um, to choose and discuss and come up with themes and talk about history and, 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 and sort of brainstorm these different images um, and choose four that they like the most. Um, we're then going to have some online sessions with Byron um, and Io Vincent, who's another one of our teachers, and really sort of virtually sitting down with the kids and getting to brainstorm further and to think about these objects. And then we'll be sort of producing composition pieces and coming up with music, using instruments, singing and creating various pieces which we'd like to put together and do a kind of small online concert or a screening and we'll be replicating this on our website and all our social media and then maybe talk of being able to screen it on the large screen somewhere i'm not sure where it is exactly um, but yes yeah, so it should be a really exciting project we're really happy to be involved so thank you very much greenwich um, for helping well for funding this for us um, it's a little bit vague at this stage, but we're, we're, we're going to get more information out soon um, and we're looking forward to it. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for that. that you know, after listening to all this amazing stuff that's going to be happening in our borough, it, it puts so many questions in my head. And I think one of the first questions uh, would be, you know, uh, what does it mean, Black History Month, to you? And I, I would like to ask our all to our all, nine awardees, every single one of them, what does it mean to them, Black History Month? Uh, we start with the last speaker. Oh. Hi there. <laughs> um, I guess it's all about recognizing. Oh, sorry. Am I on? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, sorry. Um, it's about recognising, um, you know, the sort of black, black people in history and it's about putting them in the spotlight because people have been forgotten and it's, it's very important that black history is British history um, and I think it's just, it's all about making it part of, making it wide known across our communities across schools, just it needs to be recognised basically. And I think all these projects that we're all doing is helping that. Yes, that, that, is, um, that is amazing. Thank you so much for that. Would, I would ask, Woolwich Common Community Centre, what does it mean right, Black Dale. History Month? Well, yeah. to us Can here, you? we wanted to celebrate. That's what we wanted to do. We want to celebrate all the brilliance about black culture and all the brilliant black people that we have here and globally. So that's why we wanted to do the library. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Greenwich Health Watch, Health Watch Greenwich, should I say? Next. So for us, absolutely, it's about increasing the, the positive visibility of the contribution that, that we make, but it's more than that for us, it's, it's about, highlighting and having that recognition of the you know additional struggles that we face not just in history but the here and now the lived experience um you know of racism uh, systemic racism microaggressions intersectionality you know things that, that we live with every day um and about sharing that understanding more broadly um, outside of our community so i think you know so everyone can sort of understand a bit more about our lives can, can I also add, Joy, to that, that one of the things that is really important to us about moving around the borough, and as somebody who's a survivor myself, that some of the messages that they're bringing across around the borough will undoubtedly enable some women to draw attention to health issues they may not otherwise be aware of and may actually prevent an ill health catastrophe and that will be done in a creative and amazingly colourful way and is what's important to my heart on this issue. Thank you so much. Um, I think I might change, change your question now. Hello. 
Uh, can you put everyone on mute, please, Sam? Uh, can you put everyone on mute, please, Sam? Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Okay, the next question would be, whose responsibility it is to celebrate Black History Month? Is it only the black people or is it the wider community? And I will start with Black Female Interbra. If they're not there, we'll go to Maritime Museum. Oh, Lucy. Um, are, we, are we on? Good. Yes. Okay, responsibility. We are all part of the jigsaw. It is all our responsibility to celebrate Black history, Black culture, Black achievement, Black contribution, and Black voice. Everyone has a duty of care to give everyone a platform, including the Black community. Uh, it's long overdue. But I think we're getting there and this opportunity is for everyone from school to, to local authority, to central government, to community leaders, to everyone out there in the community. It is our duty. So let's make this month count. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, I think as we are running short for time, I'll do one more short. question and I'll put that question to Maritime Museum. How do we involve the wider community in this and build on a legacy going forward? So, so just to, um, sorry, just to add to, to, to what Lucy said is that uh, to absolutely it's about celebration, but we are really passionate that it goes beyond a month and that every day is um, a day to celebrate black history. And I think that is how we start to invite, involve wider community by breaking down some barriers, making people feel involved, giving them um, a sense of ownership, especially from our situation, ownership um, into the national collection um, and uh, just being entirely welcoming and celebrating. Um, different cultures. Brilliant. And I'll go for one more. I think I'll go for the same question as well. We ask uh, the last uh, culture access. How do we involve the wider community in this? Hello. <laughs> um, I think by doing it and, and making um, people aware. Um, it, I, it sounds great to say that we celebrate and we should celebrate, but also celebration includes um, being proud of all our different identities. So I would say that being, being BAME myself, um, that it's part of my duty because uh, Black history is also part of British history, so it's 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 important to be to to be aware of that and to celebrate and let people know about the importance of Black history and achievements of Black disabled people as well as all Black people in our culture. If that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, it does. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, All Souls Gathering, what does Black History Month mean to you? Yes. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Black History Month, uh, month celebration, um, it means a lot to us. Um, we see this in our organization as a team as well. We are very, very much happy and very passionate about this. And especially the African diaspora. And um, we see this as a, a platform to tell our untold stories. That is what we are doing. Our culture, the, the significance and the meaning of it to um, on a broader scope for the world to know people from diverse cultures and backgrounds to know what Africa is about, our people, our way of life, things that um, maybe the world might see, but especially um, talking earlier about even our drumming as well. 
and um, it has a strong meaning. Um, the way we play drums, they have a strong meaning which is related to um, every tribe, especially from the African continent. So that is why we are very, very happy and very passionate about to um, um, celebrate Black History Month um, in this season. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, Adele's. Uh, okay, I think uh, Adele's. Uh, been cut off, so. Been cut off, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry that I appear to be. <laughs> <something like that. laughs> so the next question, uh, I think that is uh, who wants to answer that question is uh, has Healthwatch answered the question? Has everybody, every one of the awardees answered the question? Had a chance? Fantastic. Okay, so we're then going to go to the open Q&A session. Um, does anyone want to ask a question, make a point about Black History Month 365 uh, to any attendees, awardees, or just talk about collaboration or anything at all? So if we can do the usual um, hand raise bit on the blue hand using the, uh, the raise hand function, uh, which I think is in either chat or participants, I think. I think it's in participants. So. Right, let's have a look. Are there any questions? We don't have to have any questions. <laughs> Does anyone else want to? So which is, oh, there you go. I can see, I can see a blue hand, someone helping me out of my, my difficulty. Lucy, take the floor, please. Can we unmute Lucy? There you go, I un unmuted you. Lucy, you're on. Yeah. Well, I just want to say we are designing a, a tapestry for the Black History Month. So if you, if any of the participants or anyone in the audience that would like something special about their community that they want us to actually add to the tapestry, they can actually send it to us. Those tapestries will be displayed in Tramshave. We're bringing one to the town hall and also bringing to the to the to the Woolwich Library, so it's a big frame, so it's not a small tapestry. Sorry, just give me this. Sorry, just one second, please. <laughs> not quite sure what's happening there. We have a question from Lucy. Are you showing us something? Frame. They come, they come. The camera don't go. So it's going to be, it's a massive frame of tapestry. So it's going to tell the story of, of Greenwich and the black community, even with a shop. So if you are interested in your story being on this frame, please just inbox it to us and we shall actually use fabric to tell your story. That's fantastic, Lucy. Thank you. Look forward to seeing the, uh, the, the finished product. That sounds great. Uh, Councillor Williams, did you want to come in and, and say something? Ah, yes, please. Thank you, Taki. I'm just, um, Lucy, thank you for that. Uh, that actually answered the question I was going to ask. So my question might, uh, maybe another one of the participants will uh, take up the question. So what I want to know is, uh, throughout this month, how will your celebration um, address the inequalities we've seen from the uh, COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter movement uh, and the anti-racist, how will it be uh, addressed those issues? Is there something within your um, package that will help to uh, shape the future in terms of um, uh, uh, stamping out inequalities in our society? Thank you. And it's, it's to anyone. I don't know if any of the panel members want to jump on, any of the participants want to jump on that question. Otherwise, I will select. We've got Global Fusion here, um, and uh, they've got their hand up. Hi there. Take it away. Just uh, need to unmute myself. Um, so I was going to ask something else, but in answer to that, I think, um, obviously, education is the key to everything. And uh, hopefully some, the activities and events that are happening all over the borough, all over this month will help that. Uh, one thing I wanted to say was, uh, as, to, as well as celebrating, which is what we're doing, and we do it every year and have done for the last 20 years, Black History Month, we're also um, conscious of Black Lives Matters. 
matter and we have a poetry spoken word and music night in which Patterson Joseph will be uh, appearing and we will also be launching an art piece commissioned by Greenwich um, for Black Lives Matter and then that's going to be going around the borough so that's a legacy piece that we hope will um, you know help to, to move things forward and draw attention to this um, very um, got this you know important issue during this month as well thank you fantastic thank you for that and um lucy did you want to come back you've got the raised hand again or did you want to say something else in, in 1970 we started celeb we celebrated black um history month um because um, black female entrepreneur will be talking about artifacts as well as slavery. So this brings us back and to the modern days, what the history and what everything entails. So what's happening now with the Black Life Matters, it will give us a new a memory or to create the structure and the history why people are pursuing Black um, Life Matters. So we, we from Black Female Entrepreneur Greenwich, we're going to be talking about slavery. So that's gives us the background. I was also going to be talking about a few things with our poetry. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you. And Eleanor, I see your hand up. Would you like to, um, to take the microphone? I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I forgot to say that our event is called Disabled Black Lives Matter. So actually, uh, it is an event that we're thanks to um, Greenwich funding we're put, putting up, but it's also we're joining with uh, black disabled people all over the world in, in, in helping to do this because um, we can't talk about uh, disabled lives without mentioning black disabled lives and all the extra discrimination. So that's why it's a celebration of the lives, day-to-day um, -day lives, but also um, an acknowledgement of the barriers, the uh, double, triple barriers that disabled, black disabled people have to face. Thanks. Thank you. And would anyone else like to make any final concluding comments? Uh, Sonia, over to you. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Um, I don't know if you can see, but in the background is a picture of my father. We came over from uh, the West Indies, um, not necessarily on the same boat as, but exactly the same year. He ended up in Italy and he had to work his way up through Italy and uh, had much discrimination and was put into jail on his way to join the RAF in the UK. And for me, Black History Month and Black Lives Matter actually represents how far I have come and what my father had to put up with when he first arrived. And my, my life has been improved by the relationships that I have made with black people throughout Woolwich, throughout my time. Um, in this borough. So I just wanted to say that it's a celebration of how far we've come, but also how far we have to go. <clears throat> My father sadly passed a few years ago, but he represented the UK, England, Gloucester, and started his uh, life in this country very close to where we are now, which I didn't realise until recently. But yeah, I'd like to say that everybody's lives matter, but those of us who are mixed race etc also want to thank everybody for making these things available and that i work for Shrewsbury house community center i have capacity for any groups that want to come be together and i can link people with other groups particularly i was saying to eleanor we have headway group who works out of Shrewsbury house who have a number of black disabled men who would probably really appreciate being part of your group. 
et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's about networking and I think that um, this is good, this is great. And unfortunately we haven't done as much as we did last year, but thanks to Global Fusion for choosing to come back to Shrewsbury House. And I hope to see some of you um, at Shrewsbury House for other events that we'll be doing throughout the year to bring more BAME um, people into our environment safely and, and happily. Fantastic, Sonia. That was a great story. Thanks for sharing that. It's a wonderful picture. And it, isn't it amazing how, you know, this, this sort of forum um, can bring uh, these wonderful personal stories out. And I think if we talk amongst ourselves, I think we find lots of stories of discrimination and tough times, but how we started to try to work together to highlight them and how the next generation, you, me, uh, others, many others, um, have started to change the dialogue. And the, the debate this morning that we had um, just shows how far we've come. We had an, an all black panel um, who were able to share their experiences about and their views and their, their intellect.